So plan C, there is no plan C for immigration amnesty. However, 92 legal scholars have put their signature on a petition calling for the Vice President Kamala Harris and the Senate Democratic leadership to include all of the immigration protections that we've talked about, both Plan A and Plan B, in the reconciliation package, despite the parliamentarian mm. ruling against the move. Now, according to these scholars, and I have to tell you something, I learn about this as we go along, because the one thing I am not a scholar of is Senate parliamentary rules. I don't think many people are. But these 92 scholars are experts mm. in Senate parliamentarian rules. And they have wrote a letter to Kamala Harris, our vice president, Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer, Democrat of New York, and Senate President Pro Tempore, Patrick Leahy, the Democrat of Vermont, Pro Tempore is the number two person in the Senate. And they're saying that they should overrule the parliamentarian because the parliamentarian's ruling not to include immigration in the reconciliation package is not a binding ruling but it is up to the presiding officer of the Senate to issue a ruling contrary to her advice. Now, the presiding officer of the Senate in a 50-50 tie is mm. the vice president, mm. Kamala Harris. So the scholars wrote, as you know, the vice president serves as presiding officer when she is in attendance. And obviously if it's 50-50, she needs to be in attendance mm -hmm. to break the tie. And the president pro tempore designated representative serves as the presiding officer at all other times. So if Kamala Harris is not there, the president pro tempore is Patrick Leahy, also a Democrat of Vermont. At issue is the parliamentarian, Elizabeth McDonough, this lady here. She said on September 19th, both plan A and plan B, plan A was the four amnesties we've talked about, which was the amnesty for the DACA recipients, amnesty for TPS, amnesty for agricultural workers, and amnesty for frontline essential workers. That was not legal to be put into the budget reconciliation. The Senate Democrats came back with Plan B, which was move the registry date, move the 245I date. She also said that was not legal. She said the language, if enacted, would have allowed the federal government to offer legal permanent residency to around 8 million undocumented immigrants and immigrants on humanitarian parole programs who would otherwise not be eligible for permanent residency. And she felt that was a law change, not a budget rule. And she said that was substantial policy changes. And the things that can be put into the reconciliation are things that control the budget. However, the scholars, these are the 92 scholars. If the Democrats want to rest on something, they can put their hat on and they can say, well, we're following what these scholars are telling us, the legal experts. They said, when determining whether a provision is extraneous, the presiding officer may rely on the Senate parliamentarian for expert advice. So, okay, we can go to the parliamentarian and ask, is this extraneous or is this part of the budget? However, as past parliamentarians <coughs> have emphasized, the ultimate decision on a point of order lies with the presiding officer of the Senate, subject to appeal to the full Senate. The presiding officer, therefore, must exercise her own judgment in deciding whether a provision should be stricken from the budget reconciliation. So the presiding officer would be Kamala Harris in a 50-50 tie. She can overrule the Senate parliamentarian, and she could put in Plan A, Plan B, or both Plan A and Plan B if they choose to. Oh, wow. That could be appealed to the full Senate. But then if Kamala Harris is in attendance, the full Senate wins out 51 Democrats for 50 Democrats against. So if all the Senate Democrats stick together, at least according to these 92 legal scholars, oh, wow. the immigration plan A and plan B if they choose to, or both or one or both, can be put in to the reconciliation bill. They would have followed the parliamentarian rules if the budget would pass with a potential immigration amnesty. So if she's not in attendance and comes out with this, then that would be a big she would Problem. be in attendance. Like, of course she's going to be in attendance. I know, but I'm saying, so why do they keep on saying, like, if she's in attendance or not? She has to be in attendance. Okay, but do you think she's going to positively, like, 100% vote yes for it? 
Well, if Joe Biden, in his second day in office, came out with the USA Immigration Act of 2021, right. which basically would have legalized everybody, mm -hmm. and that's his policy, and this is his vice president, of course she's going to be there. Mm -hmm. The issue is going to be, are they going to get all 50 senators oh, okay. to agree that's to this? Okay. okay, remember, one Democratic senator doesn't agree, it's like a house of cards and the whole thing fails. Okay. So it's like Houdini act on a high wire. Now we have Democrats like Senator Manchin and Senator from Arizona mm -hmm. who could very well be in the Republican Party and nobody would blink an eye and say you don't belong in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. They're in the Democratic Party, but oh, they are man. conservative Democrats. Democrats. And we talked <clears throat> about yesterday, which we didn't know about this new right. idea by these 92 scholars when some of the protesters followed senator of arizona into the bathroom oh, yeah. and was saying hey pass the immigration laws and i mentioned yesterday they shouldn't be following her into the bathroom yeah. they should be following the, the parliamentarian into the bathroom right. but now we know this information i take back what i said right. yesterday right. i'm glad she followed this lady into the Senate. Oh, bathroom. it seems like the or Lucha, the, <laughs> the Lucha organization is doing their research, so uh -huh. they know who they're coming right. for. That is right. Let's see what happens now. This is an important legal writing that was given to the Democrats. That the Democrats can say there are 92 legal scholars, experts out there. I mean, how many experts could there be on Senate parliamentarian rules that have signed professors of law, experts in the field, who have signed on and said. If it's a 50-50 tie, Kamala Harris can come in and overrule the parliamentarian and put these immigration rules in place. So, just when we thought, this is like a cat with nine lives. How long can this go on for? There needs to be a decision made. Well, they, they no? no, because they remember there was the government runs October to October. Oh, that's right. right. And we said that they passed a temporary budget to fund the government to the first week of December. We are going to be talking about this between <laughs> now and the first week of December. December. And hopefully mm. by that point, nothing crazy happens in the world. It would be a travesty. And by the way, if they don't come together and pass this reconciliation, they've signed their death certificates as terms of politicians. Not that anyone's gonna go and kill them, but in terms of their, career. their careers and everything, the promises that all of these congressmen and senators and Democratic leaders have made to their constituents, the people who voted for them, the people who right. canvassed for them, to come back and say, we can't pass anything. It would be the end of their political careers, and next year the Republicans would take over everything. And then, trust me, you'll see a pumpkin starting a political campaign. Because Democrats couldn't fulfill their immigration promises. Not only their either. immigration promises, any of their promises, mm. you know, in this reconciliation bill is child care, <clears throat> free education, the start of fixing our climate crisis, investing in America for the future. I mean, it's, it's everything. Yeah. Infrastructure, everything. Meanwhile, a senior State Department official is leaving his role in the Biden administration has sent an internal memo criticizing the president's use of a Trump era policy known as Title 42. Title 42 is the rule that says that the United States does not have to accept any immigrants into the United States due to COVID related health related reasons and as a result can just send people home without even having any sort of hearing of whether they're entitled to stay or not. Now, we thought as immigration advocates that when Joe Biden took over and became president of the United States, he would end Title 42. He has not done so yet. And a White House official said, despite the senior State Department official leaving his role in the Biden administration, Title 42 is a public health authority, not an immigration one. And that authority rests with the CDC. It gives the administration authority to bar people from entering the country because of the health crisis. Critics have argued it is a violation of immigration law not to give people the right to have a fair hearing on whether or not they're allowed to stay. Now, former President Pumpkin, excuse me, <laughs> former President Donald Trump issued Title 42 leading to outcries from many people saying that he was using Title 42 during the COVID crisis as a way to not allow people to immigrate to the United States. And of course, Trump and the whole pumpkin administration, as well as Biden, they're facing criticism 
over the outrageous conditions that people are living in on the border. After living on the border in these outrageous conditions, they're literally flying them back home to countries that they have been escaping from. Under the guise of Title 42, there's a public health emergency. Meanwhile, yesterday, Facebook was down. Mm. Now it's up. Okay. YouTube was always up. <laughs> and today, Francis Hogan, a 30... Uh, 37-year-old former Facebook product manager who worked on civic integrity issues at Facebook testified before a Senate subcommittee and called on Congress to take action about the actual platform that we are streaming on right now. But we will say it as it is. <laughs> You're just quoting. We're no, right. no, I'm going to tell you something. If Zuckerberg wants to take us off because I'm quoting Francis, we know why we go down there. <laughs> All right, I'm just putting it out there. Now, Hogan said that the Facebook products harm children, stoke division, weaken our democracy. She called on Congress to take action to prevent harm. Uh, she testified that understaffing contributes to Facebook's struggle to tackle problems and that the artificial intelligence programs that's supposed to catch fake news and inflammatory posts uh, are only catch a very tiny minority of offending content. Uh, she, uh, she said that research, internal research from Facebook reveals kids believe, for example, that they're struggling, struggling with issues like body image issues and bullying. Uh, and she stressed that there's a lot of posts that are making these problems worse, mm -hmm. not better for our children. Uh, Senator Klobacher, a Democrat from Minnesota, asked Hogan if Facebook is using its algorithm to push outrageous content and promote eating disorders to young girls. She said that Facebook knows, knows it is leading young users to content Ooh. relating to eating nice. disorders. Wow. Hogan said she has strong national security concerns about how Facebook operates. Senator Richard Blumenthal, who chairs the Senate uh, Commerce Subcommittee on Consumer Protection suggested that these national security concerns could be the subject of a future hearing. Uh, she said that she, uh, Hogan emphasized she came forward at great personal risk because she believes we still have time to act, but we must act now. Her identity as the Facebook whistleblower that was revealed on 60 Minutes this on past Sunday. Sunday night on CBS. I yeah. like saying that. On CBS, yeah. <laughs> uh, she previously shared tens of thousands of pages of internal research uh, and documents with regulators in the Wall Street Journal. She started a Facebook in 2019. Uh, she told the Wall Street Journal that her goal in speaking out isn't to bring down Facebook, but to save Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we have a clip. When our government learned that opioids were taking lives, the government took action. I implore you to do the same here. Yeah, basically she said when, when, when we were, you know, when tobacco companies were pushing fake news to people and taking and, and saying, hey, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, they had, they had internal research that know that cigarettes cause cancer. Mm. They were not telling anybody. Mm. And then they were making cigarettes cool, cigarettes cool for young people to yeah. smoke. Yeah. They were hooking generation after generation on, on, on nicotine and causing a huge health disaster in America for years with, with lung cancer mm. until the U.S. government got involved. They said the same thing with uh, opioids. Uh, the opioid companies were handing out, you know, uh, you know these painkillers like they were Skittles mm -hmm. and people were getting hooked and then people, people were committing crimes to get them. And now she said we need to do the same thing with social media. It's a public I agree. Health, health issue. I, I agree. agree. You agree? Absolutely, especially the fact that they're trying to, they're, they're currently trying to push it more towards kids. I know that they halted um, the, the it, what was it, a, either Facebook for kids or Instagram for kids? It, it was Instagram for kids. Right. I know they halted that, but like they're purposely trying to get children in it. And the fact that they are not, um, you know, they, they don't care that the, that the information that's on there is on there and they're not really, you know, um, moderating it or you know moderate moderating. You think it, is it just yeah. Facebook and Instagram? Is it is it is it YouTube? Is it Google? I mean, is it Yahoo? Yeah, is it it's, Bing? It's, it's, is it's, all it, it's, it's it's all of that. But like when you're when you have 
actual like apps where you can communicate with people and like you know other people can start bullying you through that like through comments and stuff I think it's a little bit more you know than you know Google and and stuff because you can a parent can go on Google and and uh, you know put like child or parent parent at um, what is it like a child lock on it you yeah, know yeah. and you could do that on YouTube as well but Facebook you can't really do that now just as, as a last thought she did work at Google and Pinterest but she says Facebook is a lot worse That's what they're doing wow. than Google and Pinterest at least this is what she's saying she said I believe in the potential of Facebook we can have social media we enjoy that connects us without tearing apart our democracy putting our children in danger and sowing ethnic violence across the world we can do better at Facebook I think the more she speaks the more I kind of like her um, and now knowing where she's worked in the past too is really important because even going back to these topics of eating disorders and drugs and things just googling it you'll get something about it on Facebook on YouTube on Instagram all you have to do is even yep. mention it and the phones listen so for right. Facebook to not be helping the cause already being in such an influential time mm -hmm. Facebook has an artificial intelligence that flags cookies yeah. it's those flag cookies <laughs> flags like for example on Facebook on our personal injury department mm -hmm. if we put in a picture of a car crash that always gets flagged and we always have to, you can't have a car crash, mm. okay? Mm. So the algorithm, the artificial intelligence stops legitimate, right, legitimate, cases. legitimate post. You know, we were accident lawyers. We put a, a car crash. It wasn't right. like, you know, gore or anything. It was just a fender bender. Mm -hmm. But that gets stopped. Mm -hmm. But things like, you know, you know, teaching children the wrong things about body mm -hmm. uh, positivity, um, you know, teaching people fake news, whether it's vaccines or about democracy or theft of the, an election or, and it's not just in the United States, it's around the world. Those things seem not to be flagged. I think because, yeah. And, I, and, and apparently they're aware of it. Yeah, because more, aware people, of this. more people share those type of things. You know, people sh like to share that. And what did they say? They want to make sure that, like Facebook makes money off of the hours that mm -hmm. eyes are on Facebook. So if everybody keeps on sharing those fake news stories, which everybody is always interested in, they're going to keep that on there. Now, now I do have to give Facebook side of the story. Oh, okay. In a statement sent to CNN Business after the 60 Minutes interview, a Facebook spokesperson said, to suggest we encourage bad content and do nothing is just not true. <laughs> That's their side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh my God. That is that was their side of the story. I was waiting for you to keep nope, right. nope. To suggest we encourage bad content and do nothing is just not true. Okay, cool. There, there Quite it is. a statement. <laughs> there it is. That's Facebook's statement. That's All right. And in coronavirus news, forty three point six million confirmed coronavirus cases, more than seven hundred and one thousand deaths in the United States. That's terrible when you think about Almost, we're now close to close close to almost three quarters of a million people oh. dead in the United States today. Johnson and Johnson said that it submitted data to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration showing a booster shot is safe and significantly increases protection. They say the Johnson and Johnson shot should be given more than 56 days after the first shot, and it offers the second shot offers 94% protection against symptomatic COVID and 100% protection against severe disease. Now, you know the difference between the Johnson & Johnson and the uh, Moderna and the Pfizer. The Johnson & Johnson is like your old fashioned um, vaccine that's been around for a long time where they take a uh, mutated and dead virus and they uh, submit, they inject it into you, which causes your body to think it's a COVID virus, but it's not. Um, and they provide antibodies. That's how most vaccines have worked throughout the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. The Moderna and Pfizer work differently. They send in a, um, they send in uh, what is called an uh, Andronovus, uh, I'm sorry, an mRNA vaccine. Excuse me, I want to get it. Uh, sends in instructions to make a protein and those instructions are given to your through RNA into your DNA mm -hmm. which is why people are always terrified with Pfizer or Moderna you're, you're changing my DNA no they're just giving an instruction to the DNA to actually make a protein that would protect you against right. COVID and that's the difference I have the Johnson & Johnson I didn't really care which one I got at the time I just wanted one how do you right. feel about that now? And that was that was uh, that was the one. 
that was that was the one that was terrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, 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 how do I feel about that now? <laughs> well, you want my honest opinion, but this has nothing to do with medical. Yes. All right. I think I think uh, of all three, it appears that the Johnson and Johnson seems to be the left, the least yes. um, controversial. No, the no, least. The, the, the most. Least no, the, the one that works the least the least yeah. mm. the best one appears to be Pfizer or Moderna depending on which which people you ask gives mm -hmm. you better protection however the Pfizer or Moderna is the newer technology right I have I have the old tried and true technology that people have been getting these shots for a hundred years so you know on one, on <laughs> one hand I on one hand on You're one hand <laughs> on one hand I say all right I got the old stuff I'm okay, you know? But then on the new hand, I go, damn. Yeah. <laughs> my stuff doesn't work as good as the new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I go, damn. Yeah. I so there's no, there's no winning. I was a Moderna person. There is no a winning. A Moderna mommy, but there's Moderna no, poppy. You do Moderna. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, by the way, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention list has added some more countries where Americans should avoid traveling because of very high COVID-19 cases uh, that includes now Austria, Armenia, Latvia, and New Caledonia. More than 80 countries are now on the list. Uh, the CDC says don't go to Jamaica. Sorry, Jamaica. That's not me. That's the CDC. Don't go to Aruba. Don't go to Belize. Don't go to the UK. Don't go to Greece. Don't go to Barbados. Wow. Croatia. Just stay home. Crazy thing was, I was supposed to go to uh, Jamaica in December. Just stay home. Guess I'm not anymore. Oh, Are you yeah. well, you Wait, you said no Jamaica. Belize too? And now Australia's Prime My Minister Scott Morrison Jamaica. said the foreign visitors to his country would not be allowed back in until at least next year with the return of skilled migrants and students given higher priority. And I saw in New Zealand, they were trying to get to zero COVID and New Zealand has finally given up. I realized that a long time ago, COVID's never going away. And so now poor people in New Zealand, they were, they were quarantining forever. And the prime minister has finally realized that they will never get rid of it. So now they're reopening New Zealand, at least to themselves, whether they're opening what the borders. What was the first country that got everyone? Was it is Israel? China. No, what, the, the first, first country. country that got everyone vaccinated oh, and like the numbers was going that down. Was I feel like we, we haven't heard about them on the news anymore. That was Israel. Like, are they, are they doing okay there? They were, like, what's the they, they, like, they were, they, they were the test case for everybody and they were doing well until the Delta variant came. Oh, and what they determined was when the Delta variant came that they didn't have the full protection uh, that, that they felt they should have. And that's when they started giving booster shots to their population. Uh, and they did it without the scientific knowledge. They just decided to start doing it. And then once they started doing the booster shots, their COVID rates went back down again, which started everyone doing the scientific research to determine, is this what we should be doing? Which is now why we are getting, we are getting um, the, uh, um, the third booster shots. You know what they say about Israel? Hmm. You know, um, they say Israel is, Israel is like off Broadway and the United States is Broadway in this hmm. sense. Whatever ends up happening in Israel ends up happening here, whether it's uh, the terrorism, whether it's the COVID, like it always happens there first and then yeah. comes here next. So if you want to see how the world is going, I was about to say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> figure out what's happening What's happening, Israel. go there first. All right, we have some tea. It's tea time. Tea time. Yes. First uh, tea. Your first my, time my, this is my this first, is your first tea. tea. I actually need tea. I need too. tea also. It's cold tea. out. Wow, Jeremy has gotten very it. good with his tea. <laughs> Eminem. You gonna check out? Oh. You gonna check out his new restaurant? No. Uh, no. You don't care, Mom's <laughs> Spaghetti. No. You don't care about Mom's Spaghetti Mom's restaurant spaghetti in Detroit? Mom's Spaghetti is funny. I would go That's if I was cute. in Detroit. I would go check it out. Why wouldn't you? Um, I don't even go to Detroit. But if you were in Detroit, <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't, don't, don't rip at Detroit. People live in Detroit. Okay, it's a place. There's lots of people there. The, and if the I one was, and only time I went is I, when I had to do a bar mitzvah. I, I went to. I went, <laughs> I went, <laughs> I went to college in Detroit. I went to oh, University. Yeah? Of, well, I, I went to University of Michigan, which is about oh. forty-five minutes, forty-five minutes in the suburbs of Detroit in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So we used to go into Detroit every so often. Yeah, I mean it's a city. It's I nice. I would go to see like Motown stuff. So yeah, maybe I could nice. stop by yeah. Slim so, Shady's. <laughs> so Eminem, he's from Detroit, and he opened up Mom's Spaghetti uh, restaurant. That's um, funny. And it's an ode to what his Grammy-winning tune, "Lose Yourself." Yeah. 
where he penned the soundtrack for his film Eight Mile M M Raps M, short for M and M. Yes. Yeah, we're on a we're on a we're on a, we're on a uh, first name we're yeah, on a first name basis uh, now with M. A nickname, M. a nickname basis. Yeah, M, M raps <laughs> early on in the song. I, is M the Mom's first? Spaghetti. Mom, He's yeah, his palms are that. his palms are sweaty, yeah, he knees he weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Oh, that's. Right. I started right. laughing. Y'all don't oh. listen to. I love that. And, and I gotta tell you something. I tried to read that as a rap. Oh, I, I am. I can't rap that. If my life depended on it. What? You know, it's much easier. It's much easier to say, "Oh, that's easy," until you actually have to. Right. That's you know? why I've been laughing the right. whole time because mom's spaghetti it makes perfect sense uh, off yeah. the line of that. Mm. Yeah, mom sweaty. He's nervous, yeah, can, but on can the you, surface. Can you rap? Yeah. Can you rap it, Vanessa? She's rapping. Can I? It. Can you rap it? Here it is. Right can here. Can I? It's of right course. Here. Right here. Of course I yeah, can. Go rap it. I I play this all the time. Okay. All right, here we go. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on the sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. spaghetti. He's nervous. Yeah. You're not on the service. He's oh, calm and ready to drop bombs, buddy. Oh, 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 oh well, you didn't even need the card. <laughs> that was all. Awesome. You, you, so you, you didn't even need the card. No wonder you looked at me like yeah. that when I, I said I wouldn't go. Let me, let me tell you something. That's why, that's why Vanessa's going, right? right. She, she's, she's like in line she's for mom's spaghetti. Go. <laughs> you might as well go perform. Yeah, it's all, it's, <laughs> I'm going to go cover mom's spaghetti. Yeah, right. for Brad Show Live. It's, it's a two story, 14,800 square foot. Right? That is a big restaurant. Wow. In two stories? Yeah, 14,800 square foot restaurant in District Detroit across from Comerica Park. Um, Union Joints, owner of the restaurant, Union Assembly are partners with Eminem in the concept. Mom's Spaghetti will offer limited seating, but customers can place their orders at the restaurant's walk-up window. Uh, why is it limited seating if they have 14,800 square feet? Probably because of COVID. I guess that COVID, okay. right. So, Mom's Spaghetti. Because <laughs> of the story prior? Yeah. Where they, <laughs> COVID, right. yeah. <laughs> Decided no, no, but, then, but then why would you open up a 14,800 square foot restaurant I mean, in the middle of COVID? Forever. I don't know. I think it will be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, how much do you think Mom's Spaghetti's going for at the uh, 14,800 square foot restaurant where you can't sit? Well, they got the to go, like the China. Uh, how, much, how, much, how much is Mom's Spaghetti? Uh, I would say like 14. What yeah, do you think? Maybe like 20 bucks. Nine bucks for mom's spaghetti. Oh. Twelve dollars for the spaghetti with meatballs. Oh, okay, yeah, that's about okay. right. Okay. Fourteen. And a variety of <laughs> pop or water, four bucks. Hmm. There's also a spaghetti sandwich, a a spaghetti sandwich, <laughs> a spaghetti okay. sandwich, eleven bucks. Reasonable. I'm sorry. That's that a is. reasonable I was place. An fan growing up. That's reasonable. Oh. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? You think the fans would have gone crazy? Like you're selling fifty dollars spaghetti, they'd go crazy, right? Yeah. They no, I should have come back. You couldn't. He couldn't sell fifty dollars. And you know, with Eminem too, he's actually like a. At least from what I read and stuff, he's pretty humble. Like he's not right. the type of person that he's, would. He wouldn't. I mean, he doesn't care. Him, but you saw him at the grand opening of uh, serving. Look, yeah. he's hugging the fans, yeah. taking pictures. That's him. Yeah, Eminem taking doesn't care pictures. for. Yeah. There was an interview I saw. He's like, he doesn't care for branding. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm gonna tell you something. The, the most educational part of the show is was watching you <laughs> rap them and them. Who knew? Okay. Who knew? Who knew you know all the lyrics to the song without? It's the Jersey girl <laughs> in the world. <laughs> By the way, Britney Spears yesterday she uh, thanked her fans who have conducted years long, not year, years long mm -hmm. campaign to free Britney, and it looks like eventually. By November, I believe. Wow. Um, when is the conservatorship? November 12th. There is a final hearing on the conservatorship, and Brittany's lawyer believes that either on that date or on a date thereafter, she will be free. Her conservatorship will be over. Her father, no longer a conservator, somebody else is in his place, and it looks like. It's going to be over very soon. Good. And it was from the uh, documentary, and it was from all of the Free Britney protesters. Yep. Um, she wrote, uh, she tweeted a message to her friend, to her fans. I have no words. And it was the fans who did it, for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I've never seen someone who have, no. like, dedicated fans yes. like that. Yep. They were yeah. no That's yeah. fans to play with. That's right. They, uh, <laughs> and she says, I have no words because of you guys and your constant resilience in freeing me from my conservatorship. My life is now in that direction. I cried last night for two hours because my fans are the best and I know it. Wow. Yes, she is in French Polynesia, Bora Bora right now with her fiance, Sam Asghari. 
And uh, last week she was posting some naked hump day pictures um, on Instagram. Yes, all the way yeah. naked though. Yes, <laughs> all the way, all the way. Yeah, all the way <laughs> naked. And uh, some commenters found it a bit much, but most cheered on her regains personal freedom. I mean, you have to think about it. She she had to get permission to even make a post on Instagram. Yeah. So now, I mean, you basically she's been in, I mean, not in jail, but she's been in her own private like social jail. Social jail. So she's like, I'm free, man. I'll, I'll I'm even free. Say, so I understand. I'll yeah. even say when I um when I saw that post, I went to her Instagram and I looked at the comments and. Um, Paris Hilton, who's one of her, you know, closest friends from when they were younger, even she had commented, oh, I didn't even know y'all had that, yeah. but I saw that she commented, happy. love seeing you happy and free. And Paris Hilton, you know, she has her image, right. she, but for her to, like, still support her friend yeah. yes. and see that, that's how you know, like, they, people love her, people love people her yeah. they, and she deserves this freedom. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, unfortunately for Britney, a lot of people profited from her conservatorship. Her fir former lawyer, Sam Ingram, he earned more than three million dollars uh, being her lawyer during the conservatorship, but never did Damn. anything. Sam Ingram, Damn. he never did anything to try to end the conservatorship. Um, Jamie Jamie Spears, the father, he spent more than one point three million dollars of Britney's money <laughs> this year fighting the conservatorship. The conservatorship fighting Britney to say I want to still be the conservator. So I'm sure you know. We don't know what he did, but the assumption is he bilked her, you know, out of a lot. Um, but but it looks like it is going to finally be over for her. Wow. So good for her. Good for her. She yes. deserves it. <laughs> right. You guys think she'll sue anybody when she's totally free? Or she's just I think run? she's just going to be cool with doing, like, she's going to... Well, yeah. now, it all depends. It all depends on two things. One is, after she's free, somebody's going to do a forensic accounting of all of her money and where it went, I'm sure that will happen. Mm. And then she will make a, deci a decision, should I go after anybody who really was took advantage of this? And two, if you do go after somebody who took advantage of it, do they still have money to pay me back? Mm. You know, right. maybe the money's gone. Right. You're gonna go after somebody. Go after you're, gonna go after, you're gonna go after somebody who, does, who has three pennies in their pocket. Right. You're just, what are you, you wasting you your wasting time You're wasting your right. money, your own time and yeah, money. Exactly. I was, but if her, if her dad has money, go after him, sis. <laughs> go get after him. him. Get him. <laughs> go get him, Brittany. <laughs> Shoot. And, and finally, this is amazing. Captain Kirk, finally at oh, age yeah. 90. So ironic. Captain Kirk is finally going to space. <laughs> That's amazing, That's isn't so it? That's awesome. Yeah, yesterday, <laughs> Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin announced that Captain Kirk, the actor William Shatner, will be on the next Blue Origin flight alongside Audrey Powers, Blue Origin's Vice President of Mission and Flight Operations, Chris Bozuzian, and Glenn DeVries. Shatner sent a press release I've heard about space for a long time. <laughs> I'm taking the opportunity to see it for myself. What that, a miracle. That's so dope. I'm sure he heard about space. He's, he, he, he was, Star Trek? He, he was on Star Trek for <laughs> God knows how many years, right? Yeah. Now, uh, besides playing Captain Kirk on Star Trek, and then he went on to play Captain Kirk on not only the television series, seven Star Trek films. Mm -hmm. He also hosted the ex and executive produced the Unexplained on the History Channel, which explores the inexplicable, including aliens. Uh oh, that's the, that's not yeah. like our type of yes. jam right there, Brad. <laughs> you gotta tune into that. Yeah. <laughs> now, Shatner told NBC today the opportunity has him thrilled and frightened at the same time, and he does have one concern. Let's watch. What do the space guys do if they have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, you're about to find out. Well, well, it's only, it's it's only 11 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Yeah, but I mean, you, never you know, know, when you're 90, 11 minutes <laughs> is a long time. Wait, is he 90? He's 90 that. years he's old. He's 90? He's 90 years old. And he's going, and by the way. That's 90? Yes. And by the way, well, I think he has. Well, I think that's I, 90 that, edited with some makeup. Yeah, like, that's even a lot in the of makeup, live. And that in was the live a while back. Yeah, but by the way, by the way, Way, he is going to break a Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest, oldest man, man in space. space. Wow. Wow. Yes. wow! Yes, our very own Captain Kirk. Wow! Isn't that's that awesome. great? That's, that's super so dope. Cool. Wouldn't it be great like if he goes into space and then he comes back and he's like 
50 years younger. Like <laughs> Take one of those, me! Like, like, one like, of those, like, 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 like one of those weird sci-fi, like, what the hell happened to William Shatner? <laughs> He's all dreamy yes. again, like from the 50s and 60s and yeah. stuff. Yeah, or Jill said in my ear, he comes back with like Spock ears. Oh. oh. <laughs> By the way, gentlemen, since we are wrapping up uh, tea time, Rolls yeah. Royce r is wondering if by chance the tea will ever be spiked. He goes, any shots in the tea? They're not today, but <laughs> perhaps, perhaps, perhaps Jeremy in the future may spike the tea. Rolls Royce, can you send us a bottle? Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> I, I think if, he's in uh, the Bahamas. Yeah, if Rolls Royce sends <laughs> us a bottle, I assure you, Jeremy will spike it. How's that? All right? Listen. I'm just scouring, <laughs> scouring the comments, mm -hmm. and that's what I found. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.